With images of terror and war now dominating uh, news and social media, you may find you need to talk about the conflict with your children. But how much information is too much and how much isn't enough? ABC News medical contributor and physician at Stanford Children's Health, Dr. Lok Patel, joins me now for more tips on how parents can support and comfort their kids. Uh, Dr. Patel, what are your, some of your biggest points of advice for parents in figuring out a how, how to navigate this discussion? You know, my son's five. And I don't even know if I'm supposed to talk about this with him or not. Diane, we see these atrocious images about war and conflict all over headlines and social media. And it's important for parents to face reality and realize that children, especially at certain ages, are likely to see these images, especially with the prevalence of smartphones and headlines everywhere. And the fact that 400 million kids live in countries with war and conflict. And so these are ongoing conversations we may have to have. And children of all ages may hear things, may not be able to process what is happening, what their current risk is. They may think conflict is all around them. And they turn to parents or other guardians for a sense of security and support. So one of the first things parents can do is check yourself and make sure that you are doing okay because your emotions will project onto your children, even toddlers. So one thing that parents need to make sure they do is have those age-appropriate conversations with your kids. Find out what they know and how they feel and where they're learning what they are without any judgment and simply listening. You wanna make sure you're doing so without any discrimination, without pursuing any stigmas. Pay attention to compassion and potentially any positives. Yes, there is conflict happening, but here are the people who are helping. You also wanna make sure that you are following up with your kids. You continue to ask them those questions and you take care of yourself in any way you can it is such a crisis all around us right now, but it's important that we keep our kids secure, safe, and help them navigate a situation that they may not understand at all. What kind of an impact can stress have on kids, and how do you identify it and address it as a parent? How do you know my kid's stressed out? You know, simply looking at your kids and seeing if they are calm or if they are running with adrenaline and they facing, they're facing fear or anxiety is one quick step. Our brains are wired to receive stress. Part of this is our survival as a, as a species. But Diane, as we've talked about, prolonged stress is almost like revving a car engine every day for weeks at a time. It can cause wear and tear on the body. And over time, we actually call this long-term stress in kids toxic stress. And it can lead to long-term health issues, anxiety, depression, substance abuse, diabetes, cardiovascular risk. So we have to do what we can to keep kids calm and pay attention to how they're feeling and realize that excessive stress hormones are terrible for those development, developing brains. And one thing we need to do, I mentioned, is take care of yourself and realize that talking to a healthcare professional is an extremely important step, not only for you, but also for your kids. And this could also be in the form of a therapist, a guidance counselor, anyone who can offer that open ear. And as we have these conversations, I hope people realize that we need to make sure we exercise compassion for all innocent children across the world because there is a science and policy gap. We all need to come together at this moment. Dr. Patel, I'm out of time, but I wanna to touch a little bit more on that last point because it's so hard to do all of these things when we are also not calm. And these images take a toll on adults too. So how do we look out for ourselves? How do we put our mask on so we can then take care of the kids? I think we remind ourselves that it's okay to, t to feel those feelings, feel them, but then take a moment and let your parasympathetic nervous system, your, your calming response take over, take some breaths, Take a moment to walk outside, disconnect news. That is an extremely important step, not only for parents, but also children. Try to limit the images at an appropriate amount of time and realize that no one is above needing mental support. We just had World Mental Health Day. This is an important reminder that millions, countless people across the world from all backgrounds, all socioeconomic groups, whether in your own war or not, with your families affected or not, face anxiety and fear as we see these images all around us. So check in with yourself, check in with the provider, because you staying calm, that will project onto your children. All right, Dr. Alok Patel, always great to have you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.